Hey everyone, Reed here. I'm here today to talk to you about a way to customize the controls for each individual visualization in Power BI. Depending on the visual, the data, and the way you want your users to utilize them, it may be prudent to disable certain interactions to avoid confusion by your users. Power BI offers a way to do this, so let's hop into Power BI Desktop and explore this. So within Power BI Desktop, every object you see in front of you has its own visual header customization. If I was to select one of these charts here as an example, Units by Date Hierarchy, and go over to the Format Painter, you'll see that at the very bottom, and let me expand this out a little bit, we have a visual header section, and it's currently turned on, so you can disable it completely or customize it individually. So let's come back up here and just review that we have these hierarchy controls here. I have the option to expand down, expand up, and go in and use all of these. Now, depending on the type of visual and what I want my users to do, I may or may not want to turn off the go to next level. I may or may not want to turn off the expand all down. And those settings can be found in this section down here, including a lot of things that allow you to customize the color that you've seen that I've already done and other things in here. So I would recommend going in here and playing around with it if you have not used it yet. But you can see in this example, I actually turned off the show next level. And in general, with dates, that's something I like to avoid. Because if you start at the year, and then you show the next level below that, that's going to show you the quarters for every year. And then that would show you below that the months for every year. So there are some examples where you'd want to turn these off. Another really good thing I like to mention is understand each of these visualizations and how does it look like when you put it in focus mode. So as a reminder, focus mode is when you click this little icon up here and then it expands the visual to the full page. And this visual and others could have some added benefit from seeing them in a larger perspective. But something as an example, like maybe the donut chart down here, does that really add any extra value to allow them to see that? If that is the case, you could also turn off, as we can see down here in the visual headers section, the focus mode can be turned on or disabled. And for things like bookmarks over here, the little icons that I have, I don't want them to ever access the settings to be able to do anything with them or even really tell that they're separate from the page. I want them to be flush and integrated. So in that case, over in the visualization setting, I have turned off the header completely. I even do that as well for all the cards at the top. There's not really any need that I have for this report for my users to export the data or do any other kind of setting. So I don't want to give them the option to do any of these things. So I just turn off the header itself. Now that I've talked about these a little bit, let's see what it actually looks like in PowerBI.com. So now that we're viewing the report on PowerBI.com, let's take another look at that unit by date hierarchy table. And we can see that that move to next level icon is not here because I disabled that. The cards as well at the top where I disabled the visual header completely. Nothing shows up, no borders or anything, so it's very flush and seamless against the backdrop, allowing a much more web-like UI experience. Same with the buttons over here. There's nothing that makes them seem detached, so it makes a really seamless integration with the report page. And like I said, there's a lot of things to customize in here in terms of the visual header settings. I recommend exploring that at your will, but it's a great thing to do to really make sure that you are asking the right questions and testing to see how these visuals work with all the buttons being clicked so you don't end up with any button presses from your users that would cause confusion or make it seem like something's doing something that it shouldn't. That about covers this video. I hope you were able to get something from it. If you liked this video, please click the like button below. If you have a thought or any suggestions for future videos, please leave that in the comments section below. And if you want to see more of these videos, please click that subscribe button. And otherwise, I will see you in our next video.